good. All right. Hi, everybody. Dr. Mike Adkison, and I am here this morning with Mark, um, one of our leads over here at Seven Seas, and Hi. Topeka, one of our dolphins. And we thought that we would spend a little bit of time this morning um, taking you uh, on a journey to look at um, our dolphins and what's involved with the, oh, um, and what's involved with some of the uh, medical care that we provide for them. I've got a microphone on today just with the water and the dolphin noises, so I'm kind of tethered to the phone here, which is a little bit different. So if at some point I lose the microphone in the, um, off of my shirt into the water, we will hope that doesn't happen. Um, but yeah, so what we're doing today is um, just what we would do as part of a normal quarterly exam on our dolphins here. So at, uh, once every quarter, one of our vet staff comes over here. We just spend a little bit of time giving them a full body checkup. The dolphin staff over here takes a look at them every day, has an incredible relationship with these animals, and is always very quick to alert us to any medical concerns that they may have or anything that they notice that's out of the ordinary. But we also like to make sure that we get our vets over here on a regular basis to look at all of the animals as well. So what Mark's got Topeco doing here right now is just what we would call a layout. And this really just gives us an opportunity to really look the animal over from head to toe, um, get our hands on them, make sure that we're not seeing anything abnormal in terms of skin lesions or anything that may be going on um, that's just out of the ordinary. It also gives us a chance um, in this sort of layout to do a really thorough ultrasound exam, which is not something that we're doing right now. I don't have that equipment over here, but the animals are trained to voluntarily present in this type of position, and it really lets us just take a complete look um, at all of their internal organs, everything from their heart and their lungs back into their digestive tract. We can look at their kidneys, their reproductive organs, and really just make sure that everything is healthy and that we're not seeing anything abnormal that would be of concern. Some of the other things that we can look at here when we do this is, I think Mark's gonna give us an open mouth. Yeah, so it gives us a chance to look at all of the teeth, um, really get our hands on there, make sure everything's healthy looking. Um, we can look at the tongue, make sure that we're not seeing any concerning lesions or anything going on there. And it really just lets us, um, same way that when you or I go to the doctor and they ask you to open up and say, ah, we're also looking in the back of the throat. And then it's also just like when we go to the dentist and we're asked to open up and say, ah, and it gives us a chance to look at all of those teeth, make sure everything's um, healthy and that there's no concerns going on there at all. And Topeka, you can tell, is a very willing participant in everything that's happening today. Um, I always like to say that they, they participate in their own health care. Um, she loves what's going on, loves the interaction, really just enjoys this type of um, relationship that she's got with the care staff as well as with the vets and it's a chance for her to just uh, have a little bit of fun here today and um, work with Mark and, and show off all the different behaviors that she knows how to do. Uh, we're also able to get a close look at her eyes. Um, if I had an ophthalmoscope with me this morning um, we'd be able to really get a good look at the corneal surface there. We can look at the, the lens in the back of the eye. Um, and make sure that everything is healthy there and that there's no concerns going on with either of her eyes. Um, so as all, most of you probably know, dolphins have a blowhole. So that's the, the way that they breathe. Um, it's basically the same as if our nose was on the top of our, our head here. And this is um, basically where she takes all of her breaths from. And Mark can actually cue that so we can actually get those breaths on command. Um, and one of the things that you know we can do is we can let her breathe into our hand, make sure that there's no mucus or anything abnormal coming out of her blowhole. It's also a chance if there's any sort of uh, respiratory infection there, sometimes things smell a little bit off. So it just gives us a chance to really just kind of check out her, her airway health. We can also ask her to do that onto what we call a chuff plate, which gives us the opportunity to look uh, under the microscope for any sort of bacterial or other um, organisms that may be an abnormal finding and shouldn't be there. So it really just lets us keep a really close eye on her respiratory health. I'm going to send her up on a few high energy behaviors. Okay. So Mark's going to send her out and ask her to do a little bit of hard work here for a second in terms of some good jumps. and. One of the things that we really like when we ask her to do that is it really gets her heart rate up a little bit, gets her breathing up a little bit. It would be like asking me to go take a lap and run around the building here. And with that, she's gonna exhale a little bit more forcefully and 
it lets us just make sure that our lungs sound healthy. So it would be the same as when you go to the doctor and they ask you, they put the stethoscope on you and ask you to take a deep breath. It's really just letting us check that kind of deep, deep respiratory function. Um, we're also going to look back here at her uh, genital slit um, back here, and this is all just normal and healthy looking. We want to make sure there's no lesions, no abnormal findings here. Um, and then the same thing on her underside. We're going to look at her whole belly here, make sure that everything looks healthy. This is actually her belly button right here. Um, everything looks great there. And then one of the other things, if, can we put her in a tail present? One of the other things that um, all of our dolphins will do is they'll go belly up in that same position and present their flukes back here. And this is where we would collect a blood sample if we were going to check something. So there's actually some vessels that run right along this area here on our flukes. And um, all of our guys are trained to sort of hang out in this position. And um, voluntarily, we can actually pop a needle in right here and collect a blood sample while she just hangs out here in the water. So that's a great way for us to check her health on a regular basis. And we, we analyze those blood samples on a routine cycle to make sure that everything's healthy and that we're not seeing any concerns. Can we feature her to get a full body? Yeah, back? yeah, that would be great. So Mark's gonna ask her to come up out of the water at this point. So she'll just pop up here on the deck beside us. And you can see the ease at which she gets out of the water is always something that's kind of impressive to see. But here again, we're just looking at her overall body. We're just making sure that all of her musculature looks to be in good, good shape. She's in great body condition. This is really where we like to see them from a weight and uh, condition standpoint. Um, we could actually ask her to do this onto a scale, which is something that we do on a regular basis just to make sure that body weights are where we want them to be. And then we adjust the diet up and down to kind of maintain that healthy weight range. Couple of questions. Sure. Um, somebody asked how the dolphins understand what you're asking of them, Mark. Well, that's a, the hand cues. that's a great question. So when we go through our training process, um, sorry, um, we train them. Each of the behaviors is associated with a hand cue. So, for example, when we were showing you that tail fluke presentation for blood, the hand cue for that is just two fingers underneath her chin and just a gentle flick and she knows exactly what to do and then the whistle or sometimes you might see me actually double tapping her that just tells her that she did the behavior correctly and she's going to get a reward you can see the staff here just has an absolutely incredible relationship with these animals so they're with them every single day um, very, very bonded with one another, and that really facilitates this kind of close work and close relationship. Um, this is the exact same type of relationship that uh, I have with my dog at home, where when I come home, he's excited to see me, um, loves doing the behaviors that I've got him uh, trained to do, uh, you know, just really enjoys that interaction. And that's the same thing that we've got going on here, is the relationship between the care staff and these animals really facilitates all of these opportunities for us to have these behaviors trained, which then really allows us to provide the absolute best health and welfare for the animals. It's wonderful that we have such a close relationship with our vet team, like Dr. Mike. He comes here frequently and gets to know our animals, um, and that really helps benefit the animals in many ways. We work with the vets. They tell us, ideally, what type of behaviors they would like us to train, such as the layouts and, and fecal collection and that sort of thing, um, so we can actually train the animals to do that. And how long would it take to train some of these behaviors? Well, that's another good question. Uh, it really depends on a lot of different things. It could depend on uh, the individual trainer. A newer trainer maybe takes a little longer to train something, whereas uh, you know an experienced trainer could train some of these behaviors relatively quickly. Uh, that tail fluke presentation that we were showing off actually can take quite a long period of time. It seems very simple but just getting the animals comfortable with accepting a needle stick, um, it can be a little scary at first. So we take our time with it and something like that could take uh, maybe six months to a year. Whereas some of the easier behaviors like this spin, a talented trainer with an experienced animal could train that in just a couple training sessions. What types of fish are you feeding them? We have a couple of different types. We have herring. 
and we have a type of fish called ladyfish. Uh, we just got a couple chunks here, and then menhaden. So we try and feed a variety of different fish in the diet as well. That's another good thing from a health standpoint. So all of the different fish in the ocean obviously have different nutrient compositions, and we work really hard to, to find a healthy balance of different fish types. It also helps us to um, adjust uh, different parameters within their um, overall organ health. So one of the things that we do see sometimes in some of our animals here um, at the zoo is that we see different uh, nutrients um, come up and be problematic. And that's one of the great things about having a nutritionist on staff here with Dr. Jen Watts is that she's able to adjust our diets to make sure that all those different nutrients stay in the right balance and that we don't run into problems with either overages in one nutrient or um, uh, too little of a certain nutrient. So by blending different fish into the diet like this, we're able to maximize the, uh, the health that we're uh, providing. We also give our animals some additional treats. Uh, this is unflavored, unsugared gelatin, and they seem to really like it. Uh, it's a great way to add a little extra water into their diet, and we use it as a nice reward for them. Dr. Mike, we have somebody asking, how often do you come and visit, you and the vets come visit? Well, if I had my uh, if I had my options, I'd be here almost every single day just to say hi. But unfortunately, there's a lot of different animals in the zoo um, that we have to take care of. So it really depends. Um, it depends what else is going on in our schedule. If we've got a busy week with uh, major procedures going on, we may not make it over here. Um, but if we've got a quiet week, uh, we love coming over. Um, we love spending time with these animals. And it's great reinforcement for these behaviors too. The more time that we can spend over here with them, the more time that we can spend with an ultrasound probe, for instance, you know, taking a look at them, it just really helps to make sure that we keep them as healthy as possible. Um, it's also a great training opportunity for some of our, our staff when we think about our veterinary students and veterinary residents that spend time with us, the chance to really get up close to these animals and to really um, have the opportunity to maybe put an ultrasound probe on them and see what something inside looks like um, is just such a great teaching tool. So we try and get over here also for those teaching opportunities to just make sure that we're really um, maximizing the, uh, the educational experience that we can offer. Other questions? our mask usage affects the way they recognize us? <laughs> That's a great question. That's something that we, we really wondered um, with a lot of our different animals if the masks were going to be a, a problem. There's certain species such as our great apes, our gorillas, and our orangutans where we've had our keeper staff uh, in face masks with those animals for for a very, very long period of time, way before COVID. And that's because there's multiple different infectious organisms that we can transfer back and forth between gorillas and humans. So things like the common cold virus can actually pass back and forth between gorillas and, and our care staff. So with those animals, we've always um, had our care staff in a face mask. So COVID really didn't present new challenges on that front. With some of our other animals though, like our dolphins for instance, this was not something that was normal and we did have a little bit of concern about whether that was going to interfere with their ability to, to just kind of tell what somebody was thinking. The same way you or I sometimes are having trouble telling when somebody's smiling behind a mask or somebody's happy or excited, um, we did kind of have that concern with some of our animals. But I think, Mark, correct me if I'm wrong, by and large, they really have not seemed at all bothered by did this at all. Did not skip a beat. Yeah. So, um, it's kind of interesting, kind of interesting to see that they're really apparently not cueing in on our mouths very much as far as um, the, the feedback and the cues that they're using to tell when, when we're happy or, or unhappy with something. Um, so in general, we, we keep most of these sessions in sort of the 10 to 15 minute ballpark um, and for a, for a medical um, kind of checkup like this, we try and not go a whole lot longer than that just to keep the animal excited, engaged, um, enjoying what's going on and to not make it too tedious for them. Um, if we need to do something more um, involved or we need a, a second look at something, we'll just break for a little bit, give the animal a rest, give them the opportunity to just go do whatever they want to do for a few minutes, and then we would pick them back up and come back in on a, on a follow-up checkup. So I think you're probably nearing the end of yeah, uh, this session here. So 
I think we'll take this opportunity to, to say bye to everybody. Um, I know that uh, Mark and I always love uh, the chance to share what we do here with our animals and the closeness of this relationship. And we're going to let Topeka sign us off today with a little wave goodbye. And uh, we hope to see everybody again tomorrow as we keep bringing the zoo to you. Thank you for joining us. Have a great day.